Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about creating tips and comic creation in Clip Studio Paint presented by Jay Odin. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Marty Quinones, myself, Jonah Brower, and Jay. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. We'd like to shout out to Saturday AM and the team of My Footprint. Jay Odin's series, Hammer, is, is currently being serialized and published in the world's most diverse manga comics anthology, Saturday AM. Check them out at saturday-am.com. And with that, we'd like to pass the reins of the webinar to Jay and his presentation, Writing Tips and Comic Creation in Clips of Pain. Thank you so much. You, <laughs> what's going on, guys? <laughs> this is uh, Jay Odin, and uh, I'm super excited to tell you guys about uh, everything here. Give me one second so I can show my screen. Uh, give me one moment if you guys can see that. Hey, uh, Mario, do you see my screen? Sorry, everybody. Oh, hey, we see Clip okay. Studio. Uh, okay, all right, all right, cool. There you okay. go. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, like I said, my name is Jay Odin. <laughs> uh, thank you everybody for you know coming to this Graphics League webinar. I'm super excited to actually do this today. Uh, let me give you a little bit more about myself before I get into everything. Um, you know, if you guys uh, have ever visited my website, you guys would see you know this four step guide that I have. It's basically, you know, some tips to, you know, just show you you know um, how to create comics so after this entire presentation if you guys have uh, you know any more um, you know questions or you know if you just want to learn a little bit more then definitely go check this out it's free uh, and it's 25 pages it's you know it's pretty awesome uh, this is uh, me <laughs> I am the creator of hammer like uh, Mario said earlier um, you know let me zoom in here uh, you know, this issue has not come out yet. It will be coming out very soon. Uh, I believe it's coming out on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, as you can see that there are cards, uh, you know, coming off in the background. And the reason why those are there is because we actually just got featured inside of this mobile app game, Flick Solitaire. Uh, it just came out today and you guys can download it right now. Uh, it is a free um, addition to this, you know, game, and if you download it today, I mean, you know, it's it's so fun, <laughs> it's so cool. It's just solitaire, and uh, it just shows all of our characters, and it's just it's really cool. Uh, getting a little bit more into Saturday AM and what we are, we are the world's most diverse manga anthology. We have creators from all around the world, from Hungary, New Zealand, um, <clears throat> Nigeria, <laughs> uh, you know, just everywhere around the world. I, I can't even think of them all right now. But uh, these are our main lineups. Uh, as you can see, my character Stud right here. Uh, you know, you guys all know White Manga's Apple Black. He actually had a graphics league webinar earlier uh, last year, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, we have just a bunch of different characters. Uh, this is Cass. She's the first female Black, um, you know, Shonen lead character. Uh, you know, we have the first Indian lead character, Indian American character, um, you know, and we also have Saturday PM, which is more of a singing, more adult uh, version of our magazines. Um, we also have Saturday Brunch, which is like our, our uh, Jose brand, and we have a more adult, um, you know, uh, we focus more on like female uh, lead 
female leads and also uh, LGBTQ leads. Um, you know, so it's, it's a very, very cool, very, very awesome. You can download it for free and experience everything Saturday right now. Uh, it's on iOS. It's also on Android, and you know, it's just a great, great addition to your comic book, uh, you know, loving journey, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, and also on top of that, we have a um, magazine that will be coming out, uh, you know, very uh, soon. We'll be giving a lot more information about that soon. Um, but uh, the reason why I have this in my presentation is because Clip Studio Paints, uh, you know, helped us make this. Um, you know, if you guys ever get a chance to go to White Mangas. Um, you know, YouTube channel, you can see this entire documentary series where all of our artists were able to get Clip Studio Paint and we were able to draw, um, you know, this massive crossover with all of our characters. Uh, this is like a, kind of like a test page where I was inside of one of White Manga's videos and I drew this using Clip Studio and I, I teach you a little bit about like creating uh, speech bubbles and stuff like that. So definitely go check that out if you want. Um, but it's it, this was uh, a very cool project and you know I'm so happy and very excited to work with uh, Clip Studio Paint. Uh, you know not only on this but also with this uh, Graphics Studio webinar. But I've been using Clip Studio Paint for a very long time. I've used it in a lot of different projects. Uh, another project that I've you know. I used it in was um, Lemonade Coat. <clears throat> it just came out with Oni Press earlier this year. Um, you know, it was written by Jared Pratt. I was, you know, only uh, I was the uh, the artist on it. Um, but when I, you know, drew this, I, you know, used Clip Studio Paint. I, you know, used all the features like the story features and you know all of this. And I'll get a little bit more into that as the presentation goes on. But um, you know, like I said, just to give you a little bit more about myself, you know, that's who I am. I have a lot more stuff online. Uh, you can follow me on J Odin, but uh, you know, yeah, if you if you want to learn more. <laughs> um, but here we are. Let's let's do this. These these are some comment creation and writing tips. Um, you know, if if you guys have seen me on TikTok, then you have seen probably a little bit of the tips that I'm going to be going through today. Uh, you know, I'm going to elaborate a lot more, obviously. But um, if for some reason you you know can't watch this entire thing and you have to leave or come back or you know watch the recorded version later uh you know just know that there are a lot more tips that i have about the subject on my TikTok. um you know and it's it's pretty cool so you know definitely go check that out but one of the first out of the two tips that i really want to give today are um you know i i want to talk about creating a pitch and creating a story and everything with that and uh you know the best tip that i can give in regards to that is to create a story from a pitch not a pitch from a story. So what does that mean? Um, you know, usually I, you know, I, I'm guilty of this as well, but you know, I've created stories in the past where it's like this gigantic epic and you know, there's so many like, you know, plot points and you know, there's a lot of black story, a backstory and you know, there's just a lot of stuff that you got to explain. And then after you come up with this entire epic, it's it's finally time to, you know, talk to somebody about it. Like, you know, you 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 finally get a chance to tell somebody about the story, to sell it to them so that way they can you know, uh, want to draw it for you or, you know, poten potentially produce it in a different medium. Um, but you have to be able to tell them what that story is about. And one quick way of doing that is to create a pitch. So when you create a pitch, uh, you know, there are several different ways that you can do that. Like I said, if you look at, uh, you know, some of my TikToks, you know, I, I talked in these three videos sp specifically about how to create a pitch. So, uh, you know, one of the things I'm going to be covering today is when you take two popular series and, you know, you put them together. And uh, I'll go a lot more in depth with that, you know, as the present presentation goes on. But another one is you take a past event and you add an X factor to it. Uh, you know, another one is where you can, you know, take an already established story and just change one thing about it. There's there's several different ways that you can um, create a pitch uh, to spark an idea that will allow you to create a story after that. But um, you know, to get more into what I was saying earlier about taking two properties. Uh, you know, this is a prime example. Dragon Ball Z meets pirates. Uh, you know, inside of that video that I have on my TikTok, I say Pirates of the Caribbean. But I mean, you know, and realistically, Achido Oda <laughs> probably was, you know, thinking about a pirate manga, you know, uh, and he also loved Dragon Ball Z. So, you know, putting both of those together creates One Piece. I mean, you know, that's exactly what it is. But what you can do is, you know, do the same thing for yourself. Uh, you know, it's plus Astro Boy. That's something that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> but I mean, you know, that could be an amazing horror, you know, mecha manga. Uh, or, you know, think about, you know, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air meets Fist of the North Star. <laughs> like, I mean, these are, like I said, they're obviously, they're ridiculous, but, you know, they're, they're just ideas that you can, you know, put together. They're two series that, when put together, spark a new idea. And that is what you need to, you know, uh, 
constantly that's what you should do when you are trying to create a story whenever you come up with that idea and you sit down and you know you've come up with that entire pitch now it's time to actually talk to you know whoever and you've you know you have those two series in mind now so you can tell that to them and then that way they have an idea of what you're trying to you know tell them the story is about whereas if you do it the opposite way and you create a story and now you have to create a pitch now you have to think to yourself really really hard what two properties what two you know popular recognizable properties are actually you know representing my story and it's it's very difficult and to go through all of that it's it's a headache and i'm just trying to help you <laughs> avoid all of that right now so uh like i said this is you know definitely one of the tips that i've been wanting to give uh for a very long time um you know create a uh, create a story from a pitch, not a uh, pitch from a story. So hopefully that made uh, more sense. If you guys have any questions, we will have a Q and A later on. So definitely stick around. But the uh, next uh, the next tip that I want to give is uh, all in regards to drawing. Um, you know, and how you can use sequential art to the fullest to tell your story. Uh, you know, this is how you can you know tell your entire story using pictures alone. And I'm gonna give some examples, but um, you know, I, I, I really just need to drive this home. Uh, you know, when it comes to comic books, it's not just a medium that, you know, you read, uh, you know, letters. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, letters are a big part in, you know, uh, explaining more of the context of what that page or whatever situation, you know, the story is presenting itself. But, um, you know, you should be a good enough artist to be able to express the feeling, um, the mood, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the expressions and everything of the characters and you know their their uh, their clothing usually you know helps out with their personality traits uh you know the the background can help out with you know the scenery the toning and you know all this other stuff like it, it actually like it truly helps out uh and, and makes you know your story um you know a visual thing not just something that you can read so these are some examples that i have i pulled from lemonade code so as you can see i start off with an establishing shot and I'm slowly zooming in and, uh, you know, you see this dog, you know, approach, you know, this structure right here. And like he jumps up on the seat and, you know, he hits this thing and, you know, now he's wet. So obviously there are some words that are getting, that are being said inside of this video, inside of this, um, you know, comic. But, you know, as just a visual thing, you know, you, you know, these are the moments, the moment to moment, you know, sequences that, uh, you know, are explaining what the story is. And, you know, that's something that, you know, as a comic book artist, uh, one of the things that you can do to uh, get better at planning out those things and planning out each panel is thumbnails. Um, I've talked to several different artists that say they don't want to do thumbnails. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> planning out exactly what you want to draw is like, you know, the best thing that you can do to, you know, have the best story like that you can ever make. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> maybe that sounded kind of weird saying it <laughs> like that. But I mean, when you are when you are creating a story that is visually like telling you everything that's happening, you know, I, I don't have to explain, you know, like this next page, for example, you know, this is when somebody comes up, talks to them, rubs them up, and then, you know, says something else. And then we get like this uh, panel of this old lady. So obviously, you know, there's a lot of other things that can be said right here, but like, he's not, you know, really cool with this old lady being right here. So, you know, if you take other cues, you know, you know, this old lady is going to be babysitting him. And, you know, he's not really okay with that. But from his expressions and from, you know, how she's looking at him and, you know, all this other stuff, you can get that feeling. So let's let's look at another page. <clears throat> he's running after her and like, he's trying to, you know, tell her something and like, she's, you know, she has to leave. So she gives him something and he's visually very, very sad. Like you can see that this expression is on his face and like, she's trying to help him out, but she's also kind of sad that, you know, she has to leave him. So like all of this is, you know, being told to you, uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm saying it, but <laughs> if you were to uh, look at just these pages without me saying anything, I mean, you would be able to tell that, you know, she had to leave and, you know, there's some futuristic elements inside this book. So definitely go check it out. But <laughs> uh, she had to leave. And, you know, he said that, you know, she had to leave and, you know, he walks back, you see the dog, the dog's actually even sad for him. And, you know, these are just small details that as a comic book artist, you should definitely pay attention to. And, you know, they they help uh, tell your story, you know, even if you're not, you know, um, you know, being the letter. Like, so for instance, this book, uh, I didn't letter, like anything inside this book. There was actually another um, letterer, his name was Crank, amazing. 
And, um, you know, he had to go off of the cues that I had to be able, you know, obviously also the script as well. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he had to like, you know, look at everything and, you know, see exactly where, you know, um, you know, where he should put the speech bubbles. So that way he doesn't like obstruct, you know, some of the, uh, you know, facial expressions. And, you know, it, he did a masterful job. So definitely go check it out. But, uh, you know, like I said, like this is just something that you can do as a comic book artist, visual storytelling, the sequential art of it all. Like that's, it is very, very important. Um, like I said, you know, Lemonade Code, this was a very, very fun book to draw and I had a blast doing it. It was, it was very, very cool. Um, so definitely go check it out if you want to. Uh, but here are some more examples of, you know, uh, another comic that I draw, which is Hammer. <laughs> um, as you can see, obviously, there's a lot more detail. Uh, you know, I, I do this a lot more recently. This is actually a chapter that came out um, last month, if I'm not mistaken, chapter 24. And, uh, you know, you can see that he's excited. He's running towards uh, this character. You know, he grabs this bag that she was holding. And he says something in conviction and, you know, you know, makes his fist and, like, he's really, really happy. And, you know, then they just start to talk. But as they're talking, you know, you can see that, you know, like, he's interested in what she's saying. He's starting to think about stuff. But, you know, now he's sad. And, you know, like I said, they're just, like, you know, these subtle cues that you can use to, you know, create that um, connection with that character that you're reading about. Now, there are other things that you can do. Let me go back a little bit up uh, to Lemonade Code. Um, this is actually another trick that I am getting a lot better at. I've been practicing uh, my entire life. And ever since I actually read this book right here, this is Making Comics by Scott McCloud. I totally recommend this book. Uh, you know, he has not paid me at all to tell people this. <laughs> I have, I think I tweeted at him once and he said, thank you. And that was it. No. <laughs> so for him to only do that and for me to still talk about this book just shows you how amazing this book is. So definitely go check it out, uh, you know, if you want to learn a little bit more about comics. But um, you know, one of the things that he talks about inside of that book is leading the eye and how you can do that. So, uh, you know, I am still getting better at it, but I mean, you know, as you can see, like, you know, there are like, everything is kind of like moving towards like this one panel, his feet are moving towards that panel. Like, you know, he's jumping that way, but like, he's coming from like this area and it like leads, like you see how his, uh, paw is like, you know, it, it, he's hitting a button on this panel, but it's facing this way and it leads to this. And, you know, th they're just like small things that you can do like that throughout every single page. Uh, you know, even when you're a letterer, you can actually, um, you know, have it flow from uh, bubble to bubble. Uh, you know, there, there are several things that you can do, uh, like I said, when you create a comic and you're trying to make the eye flow for the reader. But, um, you know, being able to lead the eye in that way is it's, it's very difficult and it takes practice. And like I said, it also takes it also takes uh, planning. Uh, you know, that's why thumbnails are so important. So definitely keep that in mind. I'm gonna go back to uh, these hammer pages so I can show you uh, how I tried to implement, um, you know, the flowing of the eye there. But uh, he's, you know, going towards her. You know, you can see that like she's giving him that. This bag is actually coming out and like it's facing that way. She, he's facing that way. You know, now his eyes are looking that way. Like, I mean, you know, it just goes to panel to panel. And, you know, it's it's not <laughs> it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but it's definitely uh, challenging and really fun for any comic book artist that, you know, definitely wants to, you know, create the best work that they can make. So uh, that is another tip that I have for everybody here. Um, you know, I really hope that you guys, uh, you know, take this to heart and, you know, everybody out there that really wants to draw comics, um, you know, just know that, you know, there are several different tutorials out there. Uh, you know, we've created several different tutorials, you know, these videos right here, this is an entire video series documenting how to, you know, create bubbles, how to, you know, create panels, you know, how to tone, like, you know, this is, you know, this is what all of, we, all of us, <laughs> all of us in South of Saturday AM, like we all use Clip Studio Paint. It's an amazing product. And, you know, if you're a comic book artist, this is definitely like what you need to, you know, have, uh, you know, there's, there's so many awesome things about it. And uh, yeah, you know, I just, I really hope that you guys will enjoy um, uh, <laughs> all of those videos, but uh, let me go into uh, this right here. And let me just talk to you guys. If you guys have any questions, you know, definitely, um, you know, post them <laughs> and I can go into more detail about anything. And uh, yeah, you know, these are all some of my, uh, you know, social medias that you guys can, you know, follow me at. Uh, you know, you can see a little bit more tutorials that I have, definitely on my TikTok. Um, I've been trying to post more videos, uh, you know, via YouTube. It's just, you know, a lot of uh, 
uh, you know, different projects I've been working on. Um, but if you guys ever want to reach out to me, then, you know, please do so. Uh, this is, you know, this is where you can reach me. Uh, definitely also download the Saturday AM app. Uh, you can read our mangas uh, for free inside of that app. Uh, you know, every single issue that comes out is free. Uh, we also have over a hundred and like twenty-five plus issues. I mean, you know, I, I, my issues coming out and it's one thirty-four, but there's several different issues, backlogs. Uh, you know, definitely go check it out. And um, yeah, you know, there you go. <laughs> I hope uh, you know this has helped you, and I really hope that uh, you know I can answer any of your questions. Okay. Well, we still have a lot of time, so. <laughs> oh, <and the> other... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I like I said, I can talk about everything. Um, let me yeah. let me go into uh something else. Um, unless you have a question that you know was uh, prompted. We 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 do have a ton of questions already, so we can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's do it. Go yeah. straight into it. Um, I was wondering, do you wanna do you wanna just doodle along a little bit? Yeah, like, let's do that. Like, yeah. Do some sketching on the side. I'm pretty sure people are very interested to see your progress on. I, yeah. this just some just some sketching here and there <laughs> so so that people can see like how you're doing your characters something simple is fine yeah um i'm, I'm sure gonna draw a stud from my series hammer yeah. and while you guys ask you're so fast already so <laughs> <laughs> whoa okay um first of all you talked a lot about the pitch at the beginning like how do you how did you come up with the pitch for your stories so um uh when i came up with hammer uh you know it was a lot of daydreaming involved uh you know i didn't <laughs> necessarily come up with uh just the pitch which is why i'm telling everybody like it, there's a lot of headache involved with that with that said yeah. i have definitely gotten better as a storyteller so i've been able to um you know basically uh create the two uh the two series that i would choose for hammer would be one piece and um uh, uh what's it called adventure time I think mm -hmm. those two really <laughs> like uh, express everything that Hammer's about, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then you just like you just kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And was there like like an an incident that was like, oh, I want to write exactly this story? Um. So uh, when I first came up with Hammer, I actually was um. You know, uh, okay. Well, no, <laughs> let me back up. Uh, for everybody out there that does want to draw comics, uh, you know, just let you know. Um. You know, it, it takes a very long time. So, I mean, you know, I've had a day job for a while. I'm actually a pharmacy tech. And, uh, you know, one of the day jobs that I had a long time ago when I first came up with, you know, Hammer was, um, you know, I was working at a, um, uh, a customer service booth. And, you know, at this particular booth, it was very quiet sometimes and I had a lot of free time. So I was able to just like, you know, daydream for a very long time about scenes or, you know, powers and all this other stuff. And at some point I had like just a combination of ideas that were not streamlined, but they all involved this character. That was the only thing that was like, um, you know, I guess in common, no. <laughs> so with like all those ideas. So I sat down and I, you know, was able to create a timeline uh, of like, you know, how I would want these particular events to occur. And then I would, you know, rewrite the series over and over again. I, I think I've written Hammer like maybe four or five times um, at least four times, and uh, you know, yeah, you know, this is, it finally came out um, in 2014, uh, you know, with webtoons or 2015 with webtoons. Um, I was just doing it, and then I realized that, like, you know, it, <laughs> webtoons is like a sea of like, you know, contents. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it, unless you're like, you know, a whale, no one's really gonna see you <laughs> inside of that ocean. So, you know, I wanted to like, you know. Uh, switch up and find something that was more my style and i'm so happy and grateful that i was able to find saturday a.m like that's you know uh my dream come true and uh you know yeah you know ever since then you know hammer's been there and it's been you know it's been rocking <laughs> um did you did you do a lot of research regarding like how to structure a manga how to structure storytelling how to build characters like how much research did you put into that yeah so uh just, like, go, just go and just everything else was <laughs> so um i had been drawing actually ever since i was six years old uh you mm -hmm. know the very first um time i uh started uh just you know creating comics was when i was like i don't know maybe like actual actual comics that i would like you know stable together and show my friends i was like maybe in third or maybe second grade or something like that so mm -hmm. uh I, w I was pretty young and you know as i got older i started reading more and more comics you know not just manga 
uh, you know, but also like American comics, um, you know, I would, uh, you know, look at a lot of cartoons on TV. I would, you know, you know, look at a lot of TV shows. And I, as I got older, I, I met somebody, uh, you know, who was like my mentor and, you know, he like showed me so much more about like the comic book industry. And like, he was, he was really cool. Uh, his name was Rashad, and, you know, he really helped me out with, um, you know, drawing and like how to structure stuff. So he was kind of like, you know, a mentor. My brother also really helped me out as well. Uh, you know, he, you know, was kind of like a rival for me. Uh, you know, we would always, you know, draw and like try to one up each other <laughs> and see, you nice. know, which comic nice. could be cool and like, you know, try to impress each other as well. And like, I don't know, it was just always something that was near and dear to me. And as I got older, I, you know, I knew that, you know, people did this in real life, but I didn't know how it, you know, you could actually like make it happen. And I, um, you know, found out one day that there was a school called SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design. And I, I really wanted to go there and I was I, I applied, I was able to go there. It was an amazing experience, a very expensive experience, <laughs> but a very amazing experience. I, I met several different uh, artists from around the world. Um, you know, I, I made a lot of really good connections with people. And uh, yeah, you know, it was it was just really awesome. But throughout that entire time, I had been, you know, reading manga and comics and everything else and just kind of learning from just seeing other people doing it so uh i never actually sat down and just bought a book for characterization or you know this is how you you know this is how you would just draw like this or just draw that or whatever but you know as i've gotten older i have looked more into you know writing uh you know just to you know sharpen up my sword you know i don't think i'm the best you know, writer in the universe, but I think I'm definitely, you know, a lot better than I was. And, uh, you know, that's what it really comes down to. Uh, you know, you just got to always want to improve and, you know, mm -hmm. strive to, you know, get better. So I, I think that's what I, you know, the mentality that I had and, you know, it's, it's finally starting to work out. So I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. And now that you're, you're doing, you're publishing your, um, your comics, like professionally, um on saturday am and and everything um do you still do everything by yourself like story characters uh yeah so, art, um, tones. So, so uh yeah so hammer uh you know I, i do that all by myself um you know i i love drawing <laughs> like i you know that's not obvious already i, I like I, i love drawing so much that like i i wake up at like three o'clock in the morning and you know just like constantly draw but like the reason why i do that is because i don't have assistance uh you know i don't you know i have deadlines still you know not only just for hammer but you know there are other books and projects that i'm you know currently trying to you know work on mm -hmm. and uh you know and like i said you know having a day job you know it, it's really difficult to try to you know time manage everything so mm -hmm. um you know, having help definitely helps <laughs> for sure. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, I, I do, I right now do everything by myself. So. Um, very good. Um, yeah, we have the, the, the very typical questions, um, that we usually get, um, what's it, what are your favorite brushes to use for color and not for coloring or well, for coloring too? I mean, you do your, your comic covers as well and backgrounds and anything anything particular you like using yeah so um when it comes to uh when it comes to pins um you know i usually use the real g pin i think that the real g pin i'll show you guys you know it has like you know all these like kind of like pixelated edges but there's something about it that just makes me really like it i love this also this pin right here it's so smooth but i rarely use it for like inking just because i you know i just don't um, this tapered pin is pretty cool. Uh, you know, I feel like it's a little bit more, you know, jaggedy than, you know, the, uh, this, uh, real G pen, but I, um, you know, I usually gravitate towards those, uh, three. Um, this real G pen though is the one that I use the most. Uh, when it comes to coloring, uh, I've been branching out a lot more. Um, you know, I've been using, uh, hold on. If you look at the opaque watercolor, like, so this is not usually <laughs> what I use. Hold on. <laughs> where are you oh, okay right here so this one okay let me see if i can <laughs> change yeah i think the the yeah. wet blend there it's just gonna blend there's Whatever you need yeah. to be That's on that. something else <laughs> yeah. yeah let me see if i can do that make it like blue no i think it's just blending it's it's not gonna... uh, oh that particular oh, okay well yeah all right yeah, well that particular one <laughs> yeah. yeah i uh i haven't colored <laughs> a lot of things um recently but uh you know oh well, actually recently i did draw like this one double page spread it'll be inside of 
the new issue. Uh, that was really oh. fun. And I, the way I colored that, I used, um, uh, you know, some of these brushes. Which one was it? Man, India ink. That's what it was. It was, it was very, very thick. And it was like, I don't know, it was really cool to do like small highlights and stuff with that. So uh, I, I'm still definitely learning. Um, you know, that's the one thing I love the most about uh, Clip Studio Paint. There's so much that is at your fingertips that mm -hmm. you can just, you know, constantly yeah, <laughs> like go through every single brush and, you know, just like become a master of like everything. You, obviously you need a lot of time, but uh, you know, I usually just gravitate towards the ones that I've like used for so long. Uh, so mm -hmm. the real G-Pen and all that jazz. But when it comes to uh, backgrounds, um, I know that a lot of people actually use, uh, there's like a lot of programs out there that, you know, help out with backgrounds. And mm -hmm. um, I think that those programs are amazing, but I always feel weird using them. Like it, it just seems out of place with mm -hmm. like, you know, my particular style and, you know, just, I don't know. And I, I feel like if it looks hand-drawn or if it looks, you know, semi you know, semi inked by me, like, I, I don't know, like, it, it, it's really weird. I, I don't know how to actually explain it. But I don't necessarily like using those particular programs. So what I usually do is just sketch out everything, um, you know, uh, by pencil at first. And, you know, I just kind of like, you know, lay out like, this is where this is going to be this is where this is going to be. Uh, mm. And then that way, I know, whenever I draw it on the page, I can actually, you know, um, plan out uh, exactly where they should be and I can detail them, you know, separately. But whenever I'm drawing them in my comic, um, let me see if I can actually show you, I will show you a comic that came out a few, uh, I think it was last month. This is the issue that came out last month. One that I was showing you inside of the presentation. Here it is. Okay. So let me, it's loading up. <laughs> um, what uh what what I'm basically trying to say is uh when it comes to uh you know how I draw like these pages like I usually separate everything so mm -hmm. I'll just fi I'll just focus on the characters at first and I'll make them like look as good as I can you know I, I you know detail you know the gloves I make sure that the wrinkles even though they're super cartoony <laughs> some of them don't make sense I try to make sure that they're all there and they just look really cool and then I go back let me see if I can move. Like these are all the people I just took out. And oh, as you wow. can see, this background is so detailed. That, yeah. Like, you know, hold on. I had to zoom in and like, you know, make sure that there were all these blades of grass and, you know, there were all these like destruction <laughs> wood and everything. And how I was able to do that, hold on, let me see if I can bring up this. Here you go. All right. So this is the blue pencil for this page. Uh, let me turn mm. on that. And uh when i went in to do the uh the people i would do them first like i said earlier mm. and i would do the backgrounds and then i would go in and add the uh uh speed lines ah where are you speed lines <laughs> i don't know where you are <laughs> oh there you are <laughs> i would add uh the speed lines i would make sure that um you know just it looks cool and then i would add more tones and it's an entire process and it's just it's really fun for anybody that wants to go through that process so uh again you know for everybody out there that wants to be a comic book artist you know it's, it's definitely rewarding for everybody that you know sticks with it and you know truly wants to make it happen but mm -hmm. um you know it, it's very rough and you know it takes it takes a long long time so uh you know definitely don't think it's gonna happen overnight you know stick to it try to have fun like that's you know another giant piece of advice <laughs> that i think uh, you, you should definitely have but but yeah, yeah you know that's uh that's my process when it comes to you know using pens and um uh, uh color color and all that yeah is there something that you've learned in the process where you're like i've made this way too difficult in the past and i'm glad that i have this all shortcut the time. now <laughs> <laughs> all of the time <laughs> so um my brother always tells me that uh, I like doing things the hard way, which is, <laughs> uh, you know, as I've gotten older, I've realized that that's very true. <laughs> but like, it doesn't need to be that way. And, um, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, I, I learned uh, was, hold on. At first, actually, I didn't know that I could color inside of Clip Studio Paint. That was a long, you know, it took me a long time to actually realize I can make, you know, um, I could, you know, do the same things that I was doing in uh, other programs, you know, that I was doing inside of this program. So like that was, 
you know, really, really fun to learn. Uh, I, 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 there wasn't that feature inside of Manga Studio, which is what it was called before uh, it became Clip Studio. Clip Studio, but um, yeah, that was that was one thing I learned. Uh, I also learned how um, to uh, make bubbles a lot, you know, easier. Uh, you know, speech bubbles. Yeah. Um, you know what I what I was originally doing was either just drawing them, or I would you know create like a uh, hold on, it's like an ellipse right here. And then I would eventually <laughs> like go through this entire process. Just oh, to wow. Have, like, yeah, I, I went through all of that to create a speech bubble. And all I really needed to do was go right here and do this. <laughs> like it was, it was that simple. So, I mean, you know, there was, there's several things that I've learned, uh, you know, <laughs> like just fiddling around with this program and, yeah. uh, you know, different tutorials. Like I said, you know, uh, the tutorials that we had, um, you know, from, uh, our, our book when we were making uh, the uh, uh, the Saturday Wars book, uh, the gigantic crossover series. Uh, you know, when we were making that, I was you know looking up a lot of tutorials just so I could you know like teach myself you know so I you know would know what to say inside of different videos. So it was uh it was very I don't know I, I was very happy to learn all of that stuff and I'm glad that you know Clip Studio Paint like I said has so much to offer. <laughs> like I I don't think I'll ever learn everything in this program unless I have like an entire like I don't know month of nothing to do. <laughs> it would be it would be amazing and I would love it but I I would need a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Um oh god we have so many questions. Um more about storytelling in comic form as well. Um when you create a panel how do you specifically lay it out to tell certain aspects? Like what's your main focus when thumbnailing or um, when just creating one panel? Do you have any any advice on that? Yeah, so, um, so I'll do like a small thumbnail sketch so I can show you right here. And maybe I'll thumbnail a page inside of, uh, hold on, I'll thumbnail a page from, my old uh, presentation. All right, so I'll thumbnail this page so I could show you kind of like what my process was. Uh, in my head, I see this, hmm. you know, I see what this panel is, I see what that is, I see what that is. So uh, when I was doing this story in particular, I would actually just draw that panel. I would, you know, just try to like, you know, make it thematically, like, you know, just make it look like it was supposed to, you know, um, like how it's supposed to look. So like right here, for example, like he's in the foreground and you see like this car, you know, driving away. Yeah. So, you know, I, I wanted it to, you know, have this particular like look to it. So I would redraw this over and over again until it looked this way. Cause at first I think it looked something like, I don't know, <laughs> like it was, <laughs> it, it didn't look this way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, av after doing several different iterations of this image, uh, you know, I was able to find the best composition for it. And, you know, the same thing for the next panel and, you know, so on and so forth. And after I had all of those panels in here, I would, you know, co connect them all by, you know, basically, okay. you know, doing that. However, this is how I did it for this book. Whenever I do, you know, Hammer or, you know, all any other series that, you know, I am drawing, like the reason why I did that for this series is because I was going off of a script. And, mm -hmm. you know, reading that script and, you know, like looking at, it says, this is what happens in panel one. Uh, you know, this person is looking at that person and, you know, in the background, this is happening. So, you know, there's so much that you got to keep in mind. So I thought that it would be the best way to just basically, you know, uh, create thumbnails that way and then create the page, uh, you know, subsequently. However, um, when it comes to Hammer, I, you know, I already have it in my head. I, you know, I just, you know, go back, you know, I, I want to draw a fight scene, for example. So, you know, I want to have like the panels a little bit more, uh, tilted to, you know, have the action, you know, really, you know, hmm. sell. And, you know, then I'll go in and I'll have like, you know, somebody, you know, running. And I'll, you know, draw like s small speed lines and, you know, yeah. have that person from the back is running. Yeah. And, you know, basically it's just, you know, obviously this is, you know, not planned at all. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> like an actual story but i mean you know yeah i would just like you know i would just draw it and after i was done drawing it i would you know uh i would draw it traditionally at first actually and then i would i would come back to the computer 
and mm-hmm. I would go to Clip Studio Paint. I would add everything that I would need to add. And hold on, let me. How are you? Oh, here you go. All right, cool. So uh, this is one thing eh, that I can do. What I usually do for these panels, if I want them to be diagonal, I'll just draw them. But if I want, ah, sorry, if I want the panel to actually just be square, I'll do that. And I love this feature so much because I can just draw in it and it won't like bleed to any other place. Like I, when I found this out, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like this is just another thing that I've done that like it didn't need to be this difficult. So, I mean, like I said, you just got to play around with this uh, program constantly. But uh, that's how I usually, you know, would thumbnail a uh, a picture, you know. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Very cool. I I love that your your uh your thumbnailing is like super chaotic and it's like you know exactly what you're going for, but everyone else is looking <laughs> yes. at it's like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, they're uh. You know, I I I think it's amazing. You know, I, I'll look at other uh, comic book artists like Aichiro Oda, for example. You know, he's the creator of One Piece, and you know, there's several different um like sketches that he has inside of his book where it's just like scribbles and as a comic book artist i can see what he's going for and it's amazing because i'm like wow like that's <laughs> that's what you're doing <laughs> like that's that's amazing and then like you see it in real uh like completed and it's just uh, incredible so like i i've always been like happy and like i've always been trying to uh, uh you know, do my thumbnails as fast as possible so I can get to the pages. And I feel mm. like if I make, um, if I make uh, everything look chaotic, then I can just go through it and, and zoom through it and try to get it done as fast as possible. So yeah, yeah. that's why I do that. Okay, um, we well, have very interesting questions. Do you go, do you go about uh, creating your story by imagining the story in pictures or words first? Like, do you imagine a scene and then figure out what the words for it are or like do you have like a a thing like how does it appear in your head do you have like a scene or do you have like a dialogue that comes yeah. to you so um so uh i i usually visualize it mm. i um you know i i, I daydream constantly like i said <laughs> like i it's probably because i'm bored a lot at my day job <laughs> i mean I, I i do my job obviously you know I'm, you know I, I try to stay focused when i need to but you know when there's uh whenever there's downtime or whenever there's just something that you know i, I you know just want to like like develop inside of my head like right now i'm working on a pitch for you know another series and you know i, I daydream about it constantly and you know while i daydream it like random scenes will pop up I'll think to myself, does that make sense? Will it make sense? Like, why should it make sense? And, you know, I, I go through all of those questions before I move on to the next scene and, you know, so on and so forth until, you know, if if it all works out and it all, like, seems correct inside of my head, then I'll write it down and, you know, I'll, you know, go through all the channels to, you know, essentially, like, have it all on paper. And then mm-hmm. I'll look at everything, try to nitpick it. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll say, hey, this sucks. You know, this could be a lot better if I do this. This could be better if I do that. And, you know, this is what I did for Hammer throughout the entire, like, I I wrote the entire series of Hammer. I know how it's going to end. Yeah. I know, you know, what happens in the next arc, which I'm extremely excited to draw. <laughs> I know a lot of things that happen. Uh, and that's, you know, it, it's allowed me to be able to create um, foreshadowing moments inside of mm. my series. Uh, you know, it mm. allows me to, um, you know, really ho- hopefully, you know, set up the the climax scene so so well that you know you just want to put your hands up and scream, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, with that said, I I I'm not a master at it yet. I think I'm getting better at it. And this next chapter, uh, this next arc will be, um, you know, a very good test, I think. But uh, I'm I'm very excited for. Uh, just getting better at this craft in general, <laughs> but I'm glad that I've I've gotten as good as I've gotten. <laughs> yeah. Um, seeing that you're publishing in a in a magazine that is on the page, like it has the page format, like the regular, um, A4 roughly size, um, or like comic book format. Um, do you have any limitations in terms of creating your pages? Like, do you have a specific number or a specific size that you need to go with? Um, so. Uh, originally, I was uh, drawing my pages, uh, you know, from Manga Studio. I remember the mm. default was uh, 11 by 
17, if I'm not mistaken, or like 16.68 yeah. or something like that. And, uh, you know, I always, I always just thought that that was the norm, you know, because I had been like, I, I think when I first got Mega Studio, I was in 11th grade. And mm. I first learned like how to use the program by drawing this one book that was like, I don't know, 100 something pages. And like, that was like my downtime. That's what I did because I was a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, you know, I did that. And, um, you know, it was, you know, it, it, every page was, you know, 11 by 17. I never thought anything of it. And as I got older, I realized that, you know, uh, that those are like the big comic book size pages that you can buy in real life. And, you know, I would buy them in real life. And then I realized in real life, it's a lot more difficult to like draw on that page in a fast mm. way. <laughs> like, yeah. So in real life, I changed to uh, eight and a half by 11. Uh, you know, I, I have like, I forgot exactly what it was, if it was A4. I'm, unfortunately, I'm blanking on that. But I, um, you know, I, I had uh, these pages and, you know, they're amazing. But every time I draw digitally, I, I always keep it at 11 by 16. Because mm. I feel like if I can make it as big as possible, then I can zoom in, I can add as much detail. And, you know, then whenever we have to shrink it down for, you know, the, the print or, uh, you know, uh, the magazine or, you know, whatever the case may be, then, you know, I'll mm. leave it at that. However, yeah. with that said, um, you know, Saturday AM has a, uh, uh, they have a, um, what's it called, a dimensions that they want to, you know, have inside of their magazine. Mm. And mm. luckily they match up to <laughs> the, the dimensions that I've been drawing at for like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know <laughs> but um with that said i uh you know i yeah i just keep it at 11 by 17 and you know mm. it's been working out yeah do you have any page uh, numbers that you usually go for with like a chapter or like an arc yeah so uh that's a really good question um when i was first doing uh hammer uh i was not thinking about um you know the page counts or anything i was just kind of you know, drawing to have fun. So the first book, which is 11 chapters, is like 300 pages. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's wow. a lot. And it's, and like, they're all irregular, like chapters, like one chapter is like 54 pages, mm -hmm. another chapter is like 20, another chapter is like 19. <laughs> like, I mean, oh, wow. it's, it's really, yeah, it was very irregular. However, uh, you know, as I've gotten older and, you know, realized, cause like when I was first drawing Hammer, I was doing it by myself. I wasn't actually with Saturday AM yet. And, you know, I was with uh, Webtoons, actually, you know, just mm. trying to post it on there, like I said earlier. And, um, you know, I didn't really know how to, like, put it together to where it could come out on a regular basis, like like how manga does in Shonen Jump. Like, I yeah. knew that, like, Shonen Jump, for example, they'll have, like, 19 pages uh, usually, you know, for every issue, mm -hmm. uh, for every chapter that they have inside there, for every series. Um, but... At the time, you know, I was just drawing to have fun, so I didn't really care about it. And then, as you know, I realized being in Saturday AM, like it's <laughs> there's so much going on, and there's so much stuff that you have to do, uh, not just draw your comic, but you know, also you know, work on you know these other projects. Like for instance, like I said earlier, the uh, Flick Solitaire. You know, we had to you know draw all of our characters for those cards, and you know mm -hmm. that took a long time. So um, having the uh, ability to just draw your series and have it be a controlled you know page rate is a very good thing and i highly recommend it for everybody out there <laughs> that wants to have a series come out regular regularly so what i do now um uh, the last i think this entire year so far every single chapter of hammer has been between 10 and 15 pages and uh you know i've liked that I, I, I think I'm going to stick to that for a while. I really want to, you know, keep it at 15 just because I, you know, I feel like I can probably, you know, add a little bit more um, information into every chapter. But, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think between 10 and 15 pages is a good page rate to have, uh, you know, for me anyway. You know, I don't, I don't want to burn myself out either. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, seeing that you keep working and working on the, on the same series, um, do you ever feel like, oh, I just, want to be done with this and do something else or so, do you, like, the, good thing, <laughs> the good thing is is that i have not had that yet uh and it's mainly because i am working on other things uh you know i have a, like i said i have a pitch that um i'm gonna be doing soon uh, i'm very excited for that and i'm not gonna be talking about it for a very long time <laughs> but uh you know it is uh, you know, it is definitely a story, uh, a series that I've had in mind for a very long time, uh, or an idea I've had in my mind for a very long time. And, you know, I think that, you know, a lot of people are going to like it. So hopefully that will, uh, 
that will actually happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I always try to do other things to, you know, preoccupy myself. I yeah. don't have a hobby. My hobby is drawing, but I want to make drawing my career. So hopefully after I'm done, you know, making drawing my career and I actually can, you know, quit my day job and, you know, just do this forever, then, you know, that's when I'll probably have a hobby. And uh, when that happens, oh man, hold on, sorry. <laughs> when that happens is uh, uh, when I'll probably, you know, you know, just relax, I guess, and <laughs> do other things. But as of right now, uh, you know, I just draw constantly. And, yeah. yeah. How many hours do you usually spend a day or a week on drawing? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a very good question as well. <laughs> so I wake up now. I try to wake up a lot earlier. Um, mm-hmm. I was staying awake until, uh, oh man, I messed that up. Nah, whatever I'm talking. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I I I was um uh, I was staying awake until like two or three o'clock in the morning, maybe four sometimes, depending yeah. on like you know when I had to work the next day. But I, you know, have been wanting to change my schedule for a number of reasons. Uh, you know, not only because I'm married. You know, I love my wife. I want to hang out with her. I want to you know, <laughs> yeah. be able to not just be in my office all the time. <laughs> like that is, it is, it is insane how much time goes into this. And, you know, I, I'm very happy that I get to do this, but it just takes a lot of, you know, a lot of time. So, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, what I do now is I'll, I'll stay awake until 10 in the, uh, 10 at night, 10 PM. And I'll mm. go to sleep uh, and I'll wake up at three in the morning. Mm. And mm-hmm. I'll work until I have to go to work again, uh, you know, or I, it, like for the last couple of days I've been off. So I, you know, I've just been waking up at three and working until like three. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's it's been it's been rewarding because I'm just trying to get done with as much work as possible because I know once I go to work, uh, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm going to have to, you know, you know do my job <laughs> yeah. until I have to go home and then I can do my other job and you know or my career I guess I should say and you know yeah yeah so it takes it takes a lot of time uh I would say throughout the entire week if, you, if I had to give a definitive uh answer it would be like hmm. I don't know, uh, maybe four about 40 maybe a little more I don't know I, I it's, oh. it's another full-time job so yeah 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 I can I can imagine that sounds like a very very intense schedule especially if you have a day job and it's like a total of 80 hours of essentially work but i mean for you you just says like it's more like a hobby for you i mean it's <laughs> it's so fun i mean you know i've i mean right now unfortunately it is still a uh it's not paying all of my bills it's definitely paying more than what it was when i first started so i'm happy about that <laughs> but and and also with uh you know the other deals that i have going on and you know why i've been so busy you know i'm i'm finally getting into a point where I won't necessarily have to, you know, have a day job, or at least I can go down in my hours in my day job, and I can spend more time just drawing. Mm. And that's, that's always the goal. And like I said, uh, earlier, uh, you know, for everybody out there that wants to be a comic book artist, I mean, you know, this is, this is a very difficult thing. So unless you come from money, <laughs> or uh, unless you, you know, are an amazing time management person, <laughs> like, this is, <laughs> this is what you got to do. <laughs> you gotta, or you don't need is, sleep, you know, like, some people don't do I, well i mean yeah i also i do take time to um take naps a lot uh you oh, know okay. i i took a nap earlier today um you know I, like i said i woke up today actually at two because i think i've just been really excited about this <laughs> but i woke up at two <laughs> started getting you know my work done for the work uh for the day and um you know i i my wife had to go to work around i think uh, she woke up at 7 30 but she had to be at work at like eight so oh. I got back in bed around seven just so I could like you know snuggle with her until she went off and uh, then I woke up at like 10 and then you know I you know got back to work and you know I've been at it ever since so <laughs> like that's you, know, you, you gotta you gotta take those naps you also gotta take some time to just you know relax like I said I have two dogs so I'll take them out to walk or um uh, you know, we just have a backyard. We just got our fence recently. So I'll, you know, go play fetch with, you know, the dogs and all that. So you just gotta, you gotta definitely make time for yourself. Um, you know, there are a lot of horror stories out there for, you know, manga artists and, you know, artists in general, you know, and, you know, it's just, it's, it's definitely a lonely medium. And if you don't take care of yourself, then it's Mm. going to weigh on you. And, you know, I, I felt like really, really bad earlier. Like, I, I don't mean to bring this entire 
uh, you know, webinar down. But, you know, when I heard um, about uh, the Berserk creator, uh, Kentaro Miura, I mean, you know, that it really hurt me because, I mean, I, I actually have only read a few of his books, but I've actually, you know, watched, a, you know, a lot of his, you know, stuff. And, you know, it, just knowing that, you know, as an artist that loves doing this, you know, to, to know that, like, like you, you try to take as much time as possible for yourself and it's still like is like it, it was it was heartbreaking but i mean you know all, all of that to say is you got to take time for yourself and yeah. if you don't i mean you know it's it's not it's not good um you yeah. know so definitely do that but uh you know i unfortunately <laughs> have uh, not necessarily been you know completely true to doing that anyway like you know i try to take more and more time for myself but you know at the same time i'm also addicted to drawing <laughs> once i start i can't stop and yeah. you know, hours will pass and i'll look up and it's nighttime so <laughs> like i mean you know that's it's just you know i don't know it's just the nature yeah. of the beast but you know yeah yeah but you also seem to get like a lot of energy out of drawing so oh what yes you're saying. yes Yes. So if I think it's always good. I think it gets difficult. Like once you have this this hobby that becomes your work, and it becomes stressful, like your regular job does. I think that's a very difficult and dangerous thing because you 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 lose something that you like doing. Yeah, you really you really have to. First and foremost, I mean, if you if you're gonna make your hobby your career. I mean, you know, love that thing as much as possible <laughs> because, <Yeah>. and luckily <laughs> I love drawing. I mean, I, I never get bored with drawing, uh, you know, when I draw commissions and stuff, I get kind of bored, which is, you know, I'm sorry for everybody out there. <laughs> to get a commission from me. But I mean, you know, when it comes to, you know, just drawing my comic or any comic that I've created or, you know, yeah. get a chance to work on. I mean, you know, it is, it is such a good feeling for me personally, not only just to know like the struggle and everything else that I've gone through just to get to this point, like it is, it has been insane <laughs> to get to this point, but uh, you know, I'm I'm just I'm really really happy that you know it is finally finally starting to work out. So I mean, yeah. Oh. Great. Okay. Um, we have three minutes left, so let's just finish off with one with one question. Um, for anyone who would like to get to the point of publishing their own comic, any advice? Um, yes. <laughs> That's a big topic, so, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Try to, you know, say this in the next two minutes. Got it. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> what you need to do is you need to just do it. Uh, you know, a, a, you know, this is the best time in, you know, human history to put out your stuff. Uh, you know, there are, you know, there's webtoons, there's Saptastic, there's, uh, there's several different contests around the world, you know, that you can, you know, enter into. I know Shona Jump has been doing a lot of stuff. Saturday AM just got done with our big contest. Uh, you know, in March we have March Art Madness. Uh, you know, that's a great way to, you know, get our attention if you want to, you know, apply in there and like participate. There's also, um, you know, Summer of Manga that <clears throat> is currently about to start up soon. Um, you know, we just got done. Uh, uh, picking everybody that's going to be inside of uh, those particular um, issues. So, I mean, you know, this, it, when it comes to, you know, John comics, you just got to do it. And, you know, you just got to get it out there. Don't give up. Uh, you know, there's several, several, several people that, you know, just like get discouraged. And like, I get it. I understand. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, I get discouraged from time to time. I know I'm, I know I sound very, very happy. And right now, today has been a great day. So yes, I am very happy. However, <laughs> it's like there are definitely times when I'm not that happy. And it's because, you know, you know, just like life in general. So I mean, you know, you got to be able to go through all of that and still produce a comic book and, you know, still know that like, it's, you know, really, really fun for you. And if you do decide to do that and it's not fun for you, then that's when you know, this isn't for me. <laughs> like, I probably shouldn't do this anymore. Uh, you know, this isn't something that I want to spend more of my time on. However, you can still be a fan of comics. You know, there's, you know, we need fans. <laughs> Somebody needs to read the content. <laughs> and then on top of that, you know, there are several different jobs around comics that you can be in if you still want to be a part of the process, but don't want to draw comic books. So, uh, but, like I said, if you want to draw comic books, you know, it's just about doing it, getting, you know, having the mindset of saying, I don't care, uh, you know, what's in front of me, I'm going to make this happen, you know, make a schedule, uh, you know, actually try as hard as you can on, you know, 
making like the visual storytelling work. Uh, you know, if you create a pitch, then that could help out very, very well. That could, you know, really, you know, really make all of your ideas, you know, come together. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to find this one thing. And that way it'll help you a lot better. Uh, definitely go check out my TikTok. It'll have all these, um, you know, tips that can hopefully help you create a comic. And if you really want to learn a lot more about, uh, you know, just all of the tips that I have in regards to creating comics, then definitely, definitely, definitely go check out this free PDF. It has four easy steps that, you know, will help you start your new comic. And uh, yeah, you know, there you go. Yeah, so I think that, that's <laughs> the perfect ending to all of this. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for having a chat and answering the questions and showing us your process as well. I think you got a, you got a new artwork now, just on the yes. side. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you came up you even finished it. That's great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to add. Maybe... Maybe uh, his logo. <laughs> I might do that later. So. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you so much, Joanna. Um, the conversation has been incredible. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody enjoyed this talk and, and also all the tips that Jay shared with us. And, and before we go, let me just share one last bit of information. For more information about this campaign, and learn more, visit our website, tvstudio.net forward slash n, and also graphicsly.com. Uh, as we mentioned earlier before, uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, Clip Studio Paint channel, and also Graphicsly channel. For more information about Jay, uh, visit Harris, his social media, Jay Auden on Instagram, Twitter, his website, and his TikTok. Also, take a look at Saturday AM and social media Saturday and his, their website, saturday-am.com. And with that, thank you so much, Jay. Thank you, Joanna. And thank you all who joined us today and who are still with us. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> this was very, Thanks, very fun. guys. Yes. Um, and so we hope to see you in our next event. So stay tuned to our social media graphicsly. So thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Uses.